Welcome back to another installment of Fahrenheit 451. Today we're discussing pages 107 to 123. So when we left off with the last section, uh, the firefighters or firemen had just pulled up in front of uh, someone's house because an alarm had been called in. And do we remember whose house it was? That's right, it was Guy Montag's house and he was surprised by that. So of course, whose house did they burn down? They burned down Montag's house. Uh, who do we think called in the alarm, guys? Could have been a lot of people. Could have been um, some of the women that were at uh, Millie's viewing party for the White Clown. Could have been Millie herself. We're not sure, except till we get to page 111. Montag started to speak twice and then finally managed to put his thought together. Was it my wife who turned in the alarm? Beatty nodded. Yeah, it was Millie, you guys. But her friends turned in an alarm earlier. So it was a couple of different people who turned in the alarm, but it was finally Millie who called in the last one. Uh, and Beatty says he had just let the first one ride. One or way or the other, you'd have got it, Beatty told him. <clears throat> so what happens to the green bullet uh, that Montag has in his ear? <clears throat> well, he and Beatty get into this fight and it... Um, ends up getting burned. Uh, and at the same time, someone else dies. So who does Montag kill? Well, of course, it ends up being Beatty. On page 113 of my book, it says, um, Montag only said we never burned right. And Beatty, with a fixed smile, says, hand it over, guy. And then he was a shrieking blaze, a jumping, sprawling, gibbering mannequin, no longer human or known, all writhing flame on the lawn as Montag shot one continuous pulse of liquid fire on him. There was a hiss, like a great mouthful of spittle banging a red-hot stove, a bubbling and frothing as if salt had been poured over a monstrous black snail to cause a terrible liquefaction and a boiling over of yellow foam. Montag shut his eyes, shouted, shouted and fought to get his hands at his ears to clamp and to cut away the sound. Beatty flopped over and over and over, at least twisted in on himself like a charred wax doll and lay silent. Uh, so this very vivid scene plays out in front of us. Um, Bradbury uses a lot of imagery to tell us exactly how Montag uh, kills Beatty, how Beatty ends up dying in this. So there's, um, there you go. He got lit on fire, right? So now we know that Montag was lit on fire. Uh, and what does Montag do to the other two firemen that are there with him? <clears throat> well, he turns around. Montag turns around, kept his sickness down long enough to aim the flamethrower, uh, and then bangs their heads together. He knocks them out, okay? So they're knocked out, laying on the ground. What does Montag realize later on about, about, Mo about Beatty and why he died? Page 116 says, Montag took the four remaining books and hopped, jolted, hopped his way down the alley and suddenly fell as if his head had been cut off and only his body lay there. Something inside had jerked him to a halt and flopped him down. He lay where he had fallen and sobbed, his legs folded and his face pressed blindly to the gravel. Beatty wanted to die. In the middle of crying, Montag knew it for the truth. Beatty had wanted to die. He had just stood there, not really trying to save himself, just stood there, joking, needling, thought Montag, and the thought was enough to stifle his sobbing. How strange he thought to want to die. Okay, how does Montag know that the police are looking for him? This is a little bit confusing for students because we just learned that this, the green bullet had been burned, but he had another seashell radio, so he could actually hear things in his ear. Uh, so he had the green bullet and the traditional seashell radio. So that's how he knew that the police were looking for him. He heard um, police alert, wanted, fugitive in the city, has committed murder and crimes against the state. Name, Guy Montag, occupation, fireman. Okay, so that's how he knew. So where is Montag headed at this point, do you think? the only place he feels safe, the only place he thinks someone can help him, and that would be Faber's house. Uh, but on the way there, he encounters some kids driving a, a beetle, like a Volkswagen bug. Uh, what did they try to do to him? It's this crazy scene, right? It's page 121. Um, they're driving erratically, really quickly. Um, it was up to 120 miles an hour. It was up to 130 at least. Montag clamped his jaws. The heart of the racing headlights burnt his cheeks, it seemed, and jittered his eyelids and flushed the sour sweat all over his body. He began to shuffle idiotically and talk to himself. 
and then he broke and just ran. He put out his legs as far as they would go and then far out again and down and back and out and down and back. He dropped a book, broke pace, almost turned, changed his mind, lunged on, yelling in concrete emptiness, the beetle scuttling after its running food. 200, 100 feet away, 90, 80, 70, Montag gasping, flailing his hands, legs up, down, out, up, down, out, closer, closer, hooting, calling. His eyes burnt white now as his head jerked about to confront the flashing glare. Now the beetle swallowed in its light. Now it was nothing but a torch hurtling upon him. All sound, all blare, now almost on top of him. He stumbled and fell, and done, it's over. But the falling made a difference. An instant before reaching him, the wild beetle cut and swerved out. It was gone. So they had tried to run him over with their car. Um, crazy, right? Crazy scene. All right, you guys are going to go take the quiz on Moodle. And then for next time, I want you to read pages 123 to 139.